just lulls you to sleep, I guess. We are sailing uh, close on the wind now. It's about 15 knots. We're doing seven and a half knots. Tanya's got the helm. We're just heading uh, past Bjorkwe towards Santon. Still two reefs in the main. Bulgy about now. It's great sailing. I've noticed that with this uh, cover, uh, it's actually slightly lower than the cover that we have on the Anza 418. So it's quite an advantage because you can see over it a bit better as well and you can uh, look out the back and see exactly what the sails are doing. So there's a trade-off between the two different types of cover. Jesus, seven and a half knots healed right over now. Just beautiful sailing. Would be a bit uh, nicer on a beam reach, it'd be a tad flatter but it's perfect all the same. Hello. How's it going in, going in the kitchen? Uh, hello. Hello. Um, Do you find it difficult to make lunch in this angle? Uh, yes. No. Likely. It will just be a mess. <laughs> we have just arrived in Finham and. Yeah, if you remember the last time we were here a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months now, uh, there was not so many boats here and it was blowing like crazy, but now, yeah, there's a hell of a lot of boats here. This is unbelievable, what a difference uh, a month or two makes. We were very lucky actually to get a spot when we come in here. But um, you can see at Paradiset at Finham, you've got a nice beach over there. So last time this was closed, but uh, now we can get in the little farm shop that they have here at Finham. Growing all their own stuff. big ice cream you got there mate I always do this <laughs> I underestimate the <laughs> kindness of these little sale shops and I ask for too much <laughs> this is a little squall that we saw we saw coming about 15 minutes ago <laughs> And there was, there was a whole, there's a whole family sitting up there with all their stuff out and everything, oh, all the barbecue oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, and we oh thought, mm, should we tell them that this is going to be like this? <laughs> oh no. Oh, what a shame. Oh, look at that expedition coming home. What a beautiful <laughs> farm sale. That is, nice. that's not fun. This is what the cop big tent is for. <laughs> this stuff. Awesome. <laughs> this and sailing home from Germany. Yeah. <sighs> We're back. We've got some energy back again after that long, long sail yesterday. Well, it was, what was it, seven or eight hour sail or something like that? But it really takes it out of you when you're standing up, when the boat's healed over and it, it, it really, you can really feel it on your core muscles. Um, and your mind as well, because you're always focused on something or you're always looking at the sails and you're always thinking about something, so nice to spend some land time today wandering around Finham it's uh, definitely morning beer territory do we just pour it ourselves or what? no, 
<laughs> Tell me what you want, and I'll go. I we have local Paradise Vegans pills. Yeah. So. Paradise Vegans pills. Yes. Man, I need to try that. Yes. Kultured, let's get drunk. Let's get drunk. It's a really nice place down there. Yeah. Looks like the food is good. Big brother is only Julie. Some beautiful boats out there in the archipelago. Sarah's having fun on the swing. Yeah. She thinks she's too fat to be on it. And I will be here for eternity <laughs> because I'm stuck. <laughs> Watch out for your Fiorini, Sonny. Yeah, but I can't move. It hurts. Ow. Ow, but it hurts so much. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh god, it hurts. Honey, no higher. I'm flipping over. <laughs> <laughs> this place looks a little bit different from the last time we came here. It's a bit colder and a bit less busy, that's for sure. You're lucky to get a space here now. We've spent two days here, it's been a nice two days actually, but uh, now it's time to leave and we're going to head very far south to a nice protected anchorage called Napoleon's Beacon, which you've seen before on the channel as well. <clears throat> but uh, as you can see, for our departure here, uh, a lot of people are using boys, but there's not enough boys for everybody here, so we've had to use the um, uh, the anchor at the back. Now, because there's a slight um, slight wind on the beam coming from that direction, probably about eight to ten knots. Uh, we're being blown this way, so we've got to be very careful actually of being blown straight into that buoy. Otherwise, I've got if, if I go straight towards that buoy, there's no maneuverability, so I've got to go very hard backwards to get the uh, movement under the rudder. And then uh, at the same time, start lifting the, uh, the anchor up. Now, we've had, we've had a couple of issues with this uh, system, uh, it's from Board System. Um, sometimes it the rope gets uh, stuck in the bag or the rope builds up in the bag so that the rope can't come in anymore and when you're going backwards you really need that rope to come in otherwise you, you end up with the rope under the boat and potentially around the prop so um, what we've been doing actually is just shaking the bag underneath to get the rope down uh, which isn't ideal when you're going backwards and when you're trying to maneuver because if I'm standing there and then someone's got to open the hatch and uh, shake the bag to get the rope down it could potentially cause a problem and yeah you need at least two people to do that while steering obviously um, I think the main reason is because of the hull shape because the hull kind of comes up like this so there's not that much room for the bag there there is an adjustment where you can uh, you can adjust how much rope is in the bag and how much is out of the bag at the other side um, but I think the we've adjusted it pretty good, but still it gets stuck sometimes, which is can be a bit of a problem. Sarah's gonna release the starboard side rope, and then the port side is already gonna be released before, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then obviously someone on that side, just in case we need to fend off, and I can use the bow thruster on the way out as well. Always better to have everything ready just in case something goes wrong. Yeah. Just hit this fucking anchor man, it took my job, you got them robots, <laughs> and it's not even doing it properly. Like, I, I feel like if it gets snagged in the bag again, as it have done every time right, even in the most hectic of times uh, during the last one, I feel like I might just pull that shit up, <laughs> old school style, right? That's what I was about to say actually, if you can, if it gets stuck, just start pulling the yeah, rope. Yeah, because we don't want the robot now. Yeah, because when we're out there, we can just sit on the anchor and then yeah. just sort it out, yeah. it's no problem. So the first thing to do here is take up the tension on the anchor and make sure it's ready to go. As soon as the lines were released on the bow, I put it in slow reverse and then started taking the line up. I quickly realized that the anchor winch was actually pulling the boat backwards at a fairly fast rate, so I put it back into neutral. I 
And you guessed it, it got stuck again. So Nikolai kindly offered to shake the bag out just below, just to make sure that the rope drops down into the bottom of the bag. Usually around these parts, the bottom is mud, which makes for some really good holding. However, trying to get the anchor up out of the mud sometimes can prove a bit of a hassle. You can see here that the anchor winch is struggling a bit to get the anchor up, so it's always a good idea to actually back the boat over the anchor and break the anchor out of the mud before you strain the anchor winch too much. I would like to race that guy, but while the girls are making breakfast and we've only got a jib up, it's not really practical. Get all the sails up. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, will, you will die, I think. You will get. You do not want the wrath of God on you. Yeah. Better be, uh, better be kind to the girls that are making breakfast. Beautiful sailing so far, but. Like I said, the winds are slowly shifting south, which is directly in front of us now. So we may only be able to sail a certain portion of the way. Tasty phone. <laughs> Beautiful cooking, Sarah. I just dropped you. Chris's phone in the... Oh! Oh, right there. <laughs> Tanya is the captain now. She's sailing us close hold all the way to Napoleon's Beacon. One reef in the sail. She's sailing pretty nicely. Oh, but it seems like a race is on. How's it going, honey? I think. So we're on a beam reach now, coming in with 20 knots of wind. And the 388 will do eight knots at a push, but I don't think she'll do much more. This is with uh, one reef in the mainsail and a full jib out. Good sailing though. You can just see over here. We've got a catamaran coming in and they must be doing 10 knots because they're really creeping up on us now. Don't compete with that. Wait for the wind, it will blow us on. How is it, Tanya? Uh, How is it? It's cold. It's nice. It's colder than in Vietnam. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Is my nose really red? Mm. Your nose looks pretty red as well. Yeah, a bit, no, maybe. <laughs> but yours is worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Many things have happened since uh, I last turned the camera on, actually. I went out on the SUP board with all my clothes on and then managed to snap the paddle, which consequently threw me off the front of the paddle board, which was great fun. Yes, it's 100% this one. Now we're just stalking an Irish boat out there. 
He's running an Irish flag on the back of it, and it's an it's Irish. Irish okay, I know it is this. It is 100% this yeah? Irish cruising club. 100%. Irish cruising club. But that can't okay. be a nationality flag then. Alright. Yeah, it is a nationality flag, but it's also a, a Royal Yacht Club. Uh, Snacksies, Beersies, and. Uh, Fenabranca. The good old Fenabranca. After it's, an it's, hour in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the water's pretty cold here. It's about 17 degrees. With Fernabranca, it's a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. It's Napoleon's vegan, full as usual. But um, it's a nice change to our windy last part of the week. For the last two or three days, it's been very windy. So uh, it's nice to come in here and have a nice flat anchorage and a nice, a nice calm time without the wind. It really makes a difference, actually. Even if we don't get the sun in the evening, it's nice that the wind is flat, that's for sure. I put my hoodie up because the mosquitoes are out quite prominently here, so... Good morning. It's a beautiful morning in Napoleon's Weekend. No wind at all. Look at that. That is a morning that I really enjoy. Oh, guys, guys, come. Take bread. Come. Today is handover day. We have to give the boat back, and it will be the last day we are sailing this year. So it's a bit of a sad time at the at the moment. Also, yesterday we found out that um, the lighting panel on the Hansa is also been slightly affected by a healing yesterday because there was that fresh water leak and the water has gone all the way up the side of the boat and affected the lighting electronics so we're trying to dry those out now but um, I didn't realize how much water was down there actually I got three bucket falls out the other day there must have still been a leak because um, of so much water in the bottom of the boat again and it's hard to tell because there's so many compartments in the bottom of the boat. There's no single place that the water collects, which is what I want sort of installed when they're doing the uh, repair on the hull. On our boat, I want there to be a, a nice big hatch in the, uh, in the place just behind the keel where all the water congregates. It's a shame to leave this place. It's going to be a beautiful day, I think. Nice calm winds. But yeah, we get a nice little little tour through the little canal, through to Vaxholm, and then to Svenninger to drop the boat off and hand it back over. So the girls are working on the ropes. There's no wind, so it's a nice and easy departure. And then someone's just holding the front of the boat, and then we can just ease her out with the electric anchor and start the engine a little bit further out there so it doesn't wake everyone up. Oh, I don't want to finish this now. <laughs> you just shake the bag here. Yeah, so almost a completely successful departure there, but of course the bag needed shaking again for the anchor road on the back. And uh, yeah, it didn't quite take it all the way in, it got stuck again. But um, yeah, it's relatively smooth, it's nice without the wind. Hell of a difference to the other, other days, that's for sure. So, just gonna leave the motor on today, maybe get the jib out, but that'll be about it. I don't want the boat healed over again and the water going on the electrics. So, and we've got a lot of packing to do, get this uh, big cockpit tent down as well. And a few other things, and we've got to refuel the boat. So yeah, let's get going. If you're taking the decision between the 40 horsepower Yanmar and the 57 horsepower Yanmar, uh, you can see at 
two and a half thousand revs. We get about 5.6 knots over ground. If you compare that to the 57 horsepower Yanmar that we've got at two and a half thousand RPM, you'll be cruising at well over seven knots and with a lot less load as well. I'd recommend the bigger engine every time, especially if you're looking to add a bigger alternator, maybe later on. Coming into the little, little canal now. Just coming into Stockholm. And I'm gonna try today to get a shot of a different kind. I'll see if this works or not. An underwater shot to see how close the bottom is when we go into this, this narrow little channel up here. So I gave a GoPro to Nikolai on a pole, hoping to catch the most awesome shot with the rocks going past the boat, underwater. However, the current was against us and the visibility was really bad, so the only thing I really achieved was almost pulling Nikolai's arms off. You don't always succeed, but you gotta try, right? Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> well, I'm just coming into harbour now, a little bit late. It's been an awesome sailing week though. Shame we didn't get to get the uh, code one out, but the wind just went right for it, so. Let's try again next time with our boat, with the code zero. It's a beautiful day though, and it would be a fantastic day to go in that direction with the wind. The wind's directly on the nose now, but uh, the marina's just up there. And yeah, that's it for this time. I see oceans inside me